Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to bring you guys the next video in my 2021 balcony gardening series. In today's video, I want to talk all about transplanting your plants or your seedlings from indoors to outdoors and out on my balcony. For those of you guys that don't know who I am, hello, hi, how are you doing? My name's Anika and I'm an American living in London and I absolutely love gardening, especially on my balcony garden here in London. Now, if you guys like any sort of gardening videos or if you are interested in gardening on a urban city garden like I do on my London balcony, make sure you smash that subscribe button because I upload new gardening videos every single week. So a little background before we jump into today's video, I have been growing seeds to seedlings for the last seven weeks and I've been growing them indoors right next to my big window that leads out to my balcony in order to get my seeds started a little bit earlier this year. If you guys are interested in any videos that talk about which vegetables I am growing this year on my balcony, growing from seeds to seedlings or any sort of indoor growing, I have done a number of videos this year already and I will link them up in the cards for you right now to check out. Now when I am recording this video, it is towards the middle of May and I have yet to move my plants outdoors yet and the reason being is that this year the English weather is unpredictable as always and it is a little bit cooler of a spring so I haven't moved them outside but now that it is a bit warmer and it does feel like spring, I feel more comfortable moving my little seeds seedlings outside. I just want to give you guys three tips before we jump into the actual planting of these seeds outdoors. When you are starting to plant indoors and you are transplanting outdoors, there are three main things you need to consider before you move your plants outside. The first and main thing that you should consider is making sure all of your plants have secondary leaves. Now what do I mean by secondary leaves? You can see here that my little tomato plant has grown quite a bit, has a very strong stem, and also has not only one set of leaves, but two sets of leaves here, because it's not the introductory leaves. But you can see here on some of the smaller little vegetable plants I have here, which are also tomatoes, they only have one set of leaves so far. And I'm not gonna move those outside today because they're just too baby. They're not gonna survive outside. So when you are transplanting from inside to outside, just make sure you are very aware of which stage your plants are at and are they actually ready to go outside. If they don't have secondary leaves, they're just too weak and they're not gonna survive and you're gonna be disappointed when they die outside. So just wait until a little bit stronger before you move them outside. The second thing that you have to really consider before you move your plants outside is the weather. As I mentioned already, I live in London and in London the weather is a bit unpredictable and the English weather is just a little bit chillier than I would like. So when you are moving any sort of seedlings from indoors, outdoors, you have to make sure that the temperature overnight stays above zero degrees Celsius. I would actually recommend keeping it above almost seven or eight degrees Celsius because when you move these baby little plants outside and it's cold out there, they're going to have cold nights and they might actually die due to the colder frost nights that you might experience. So just wait until probably May at least to move your plants outdoors. And finally, my third tip that I have to recommend before you move your seedlings outdoors is just harden your seedlings. Now, I know that sounds kind of funny, but you do have to get them ready to move outside. So when they are going to go outside, like I said earlier, it's gonna be cooler, it's going to be windy, the climate's gonna change, and it's gonna be kind of a shock for them. In order for your plants to get ready for that shock, you need to kind of put them outside. So what I've done for the last few weeks is whenever it's super sunny or it's a nicer day outside, I move all my little pots outside and leave them out in the sun for just maybe 30 minutes or an hour. Spending time outside just really gets them more ready to be outside. I also leave my balcony door open and I leave them by the door a lot just to make sure any sort of wind, any sort of temperature change, they start getting used to that. Because when you move your seedlings outside without getting them kind of ready or climatized for it, you might again disappoint yourself and kill off your seedlings. All right, guys, if you have done all those three steps and your seedlings are ready to go outside, let's work on now transplanting your seedlings into bigger pots. So let's jump into that.
So I have moved all of my onions out into a bigger pot. I've spaced them out. A learning from last year, I put way too many onions in one big pot. I did give them a lot more space this year. Let's see how they do. I'm also so curious, like, can I actually trim the tops of onions? I'm not sure. If you guys know, leave me a comment down below and let me know, can I actually trim off all this excess green bit? Because onions do grow underground. So if they're growing underground, do I really need to have miles of green things on top. So guys, for the second batch of onions, I'm gonna be trying something a little bit different this year based on what you guys have left as suggestions in the comments. Now, I have been told to grow stronger, bigger, fatter onions. You should actually plant the bulb closer to the top of the soil, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an experiment this year. So I've just done an entire pot where I've buried the bulbs pretty deep into the soil, and then this one, I'm gonna only bury the roots and keep the bulbs towards the top so that I can see if I can grow bigger, fatter, bigger onions, I guess. So let's give that a go this year. So to plant these ones, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stick a finger into the dirt. I'm gonna make sure all of the roots get down into the dirt, but I'm gonna try to keep the bulb bit, the top bit, as much exposed as I can without obviously exposing any roots. Again, giving more space for that bulb to get nice, big, juicy red onions. Yeah, the roots will naturally go into the dirt, but for the most part, I'm trying to keep the bulb as far up and out of the dirt as possible. So I heard whenever you're planting onions to trim off any of these top excess green bits, it's not gonna actually hurt the onion growth, it's gonna actually make them stronger. Again, this is an experiment. I've never tried this before with growing onions, but I think with gardening, it's always just an experiment and let's just see how it goes this year. So I'm gonna just trim this about here and then this is gonna be my new onion root and then I'm just gonna put it into the dirt and make sure that the roots go nice nicely into the dirt and then cover the roots and a bit of the bulb but I'm gonna keep most of the bulb exposed so I planted these a little bit differently they are more to the top of the soil rather than buried as deep so let's see which onions do better this year so I'm going to transplant my tomatoes now and the number one tip I can recommend with tomatoes is when you're moving them from smaller to bigger pots, you're actually going to want to bury them quite deep. And what I mean by quite deep is you can see here up on this stem, there's no leaves up until here and that's where I'm going to keep burying them until there because with tomatoes, when they're buried that deep, they're actually going to give off even more roots to make the plant even stronger. So when you are transplanting your tomatoes, don't be afraid of burying them quite deep because the deeper they go, the stronger the roots and the stronger the roots, the more tomatoes you're going to get. So as you can see, my bigger pot is only like a third of the way filled with dirt right now and when I put in these tomatoes, you can see that when I fill the dirt up to the top of this pot, it's going to basically cover up until the leaves. So you really want to bury your tomato plants very deep into the soil, not covering any of the leaves, but all of the stem that there's no leaves. So as you can see here, there are two tomato plants in one little pot. Now when you are transplanting, you're going to want to give your tomatoes some space. And to give them space, you're going to have to gently take them apart. Transplanting is a very gentle process. You're going to want to make sure you don't pull off too many roots. And the best way to do that is to just lay them out and let them kind of shake apart themselves. So you can see here, it's naturally just kind of falling apart. And now these are my two different tomato plants that I'm going to bury quite deep into this dirt. basket of tomatoes you can see that some of them I've buried quite deep you can see that basically I've gone all the way up to the leaves this one I could have gone a little bit deeper but I didn't and you know a little bit too late for that one again this one as well I've gone pretty deep and then this one over here you can tell that I basically buried until that first stem so the deeper you bury these the more roots are gonna get and the stronger the plant is gonna be and the bigger the tomatoes you're gonna get at the very bottom of the pot and I've just put a little bit of dirt in and 
Going to make sure they're standing straight, sparing all the roots all the way to the bottom of the pot. Make sure they're up nice and straight. Remember, we're adding a lot more dirt around them. This is just to get them started. And you're going to want to make sure you press down on the dirt around the root to make sure there's no air at the roots because if you have too much air at the roots you're going to cause mold and nobody wants moldy tomatoes. Also I'm only going to fill up the dirt up until they reach the leaves so I'm not going to actually fill the entire container this time but as they continue to grow what I'm going to do with container gardening is I'm going to keep adding more and more dirt so that as they grow bigger and bigger, I'm then filling it in with dirt, not all at once. Because if you do it all at once, you're actually going to stunt the growth of your tomato plants. And you don't want to do that. You want big, big tomatoes. So I'm now going to plant my chilies into bigger pots. Now, they're a little bit different from the tomatoes that you guys have just seen me do. Chili plants, you don't have to bury deep like tomatoes but you are gonna wanna give them their space because they do need a little bit of space to grow out because the bottom of a chili plant will be very skinny. It'll be like the trunk of a tree, but then they do blossom out and they do actually produce a lot of leaves when they do grow bigger. So give them a little bit of space. I'm gonna probably put you know three or four different chili plants into the bigger pots that I do have here, and I'll show you guys when I'm done planting them. So I have now planted my chilies into this bigger container. As you can see, I've spaced them out pretty evenly. There's four different chili plants in here. I didn't plant them as deeply as the tomatoes. I'm really keen to see how well my chilies do this year. I had a lot of chilies last year. If you guys haven't checked out my harvest video from last year, I will link it up in the cards for you to check out right now. But I got tons of chilies and just experimenting. I have to say gardening is a whole bunch of fun for me. It's a, a massive experiment of seeing what I can grow and what I can't grow, but let's see how well my chilies do this year. So this is my first time trying to grow pak choy. I'm not too sure what I'm doing here, but let's see. Let's give it a go. I've kind of taken them apart. You can see here that they have quite a few little root bundles. And I'm going to try to plant these individually because I think these are all individual little pak choys. I'm gonna have so much stir fry this year. Oh my gosh, I hope these grow. Let's see how I do. So guys, here are all of my plants that I have now transplanted outside. As you can see, I have tons of pots that are lining my entire balcony. Now I have put the majority of my pots all along this corner of my balcony because this corner gets the most amount of sun. And then as I back up, you can see that there are more and more plants. I put my onions kind of over here in a little bit of the shady area. And most of my plants are gonna get direct sunlight tomorrow. I have now transplanted almost all of my plants out here. I do have a few plants that I have left inside because they're way too small and they don't have their second leaves yet. So they cannot survive outside. But I am going to just water these now and then see them thrive. <laughs> As you guys would have seen in today's video, I moved all of my little seedlings outside and you can see some in the background right now that are going to be thriving and growing out on my balcony this year. As I said at the start of the video, there are quite a few plants that I do have that are just babies. These are some of my chili plants that are just not strong enough to be transplanted outside. As you can see, these are just tiny little seedlings they only have their first leaves and if I were to move them outside right now I would really be jeopardizing their growth and if they're even going to survive to be honest when they're this small the best thing to do is to make sure that you keep them in pots inside for longer and when they get a little bit bigger and stronger you can then move them outside now just a few takeaways before we wrap up today's video a reminder that you should just try gardening anything and everything a lot of what I'm planting outside this year is a total experiment and that's half the fun of gardening I have to say the reason I garden is just because it's kind of fun it's just trying out new different things 
things. I've never grown pak choy before. This was me trying to figure out how to grow it outside. And I have grown tomatoes before, but I'm trying a few new techniques this year. And I'm also trying a few new techniques with my onions. So I'm really, really excited to see how these thrive over the next few weeks. I will be sure to record update videos along the way. So if you guys aren't already subscribed to my channel, please make sure to smash that subscribe button and be a part of my YouTube fam. And make sure you turn on that bell notification so you know exactly when my next YouTube video is going live. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys got some motivation, tips, and tricks on how to transplant your plants from indoors to outdoors. If you guys have any additional tips and tricks for any of our viewers out there, please make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know exactly what your tips and tricks are for transplanting indoor plants outdoors. If you guys enjoyed today's content, please make sure to give it a thumbs up so I know to create more content exactly like this for you guys in the future. Anyways, guys, I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world, and I hope you guys have the best of luck with your gardens this year, and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye!